My name is Margaret First. They call me Maggie. My name is Bertold First. They call me Bertold Romberg. They call me Bert. Our mother, Sita Rothschild, was born in the village of Ostheim, Germany. Our father, Alfred Romberg, was born in Diepholz, Germany. They got married in 1927. I was born in 1929, and Bert was born in 1930. They were very happy. Along comes a, a charismatic orator, Adolf Hitler, with an agenda of reorganizing society. The first two regulations that came out in 1933 that affected our family immediately. No Jewish child will attend the public school. And the second one, it's not morally right as a good German to be doing business with a Jew. If you have to do business with Jewish people, pay them as little as possible maybe not pay them at all. We lost our economic freedom and certainly our, our basic rights. Our dad was harassed endlessly by the stormtroopers. They came knocking on our doors and windows. It took a toll on him. He had a fatal heart attack. So that was very traumatic for my mother. They had only been married seven years. My mother and my grandmother were also active in the business. They struggled after my father died to keep the business afloat. So mama was in charge from then on. So she is subject to the whims of what her neighbors will do. They came into the store, banged on the counter. They said, well, we don't have to pay you, you Jews. And in 1936, she decided to sell the business. We managed to get to Eschwege with my grandmother. Eschwege, different from us time, was a rather larger community, some 20 to 25,000. But then an event in late 1938 was Kristallnacht. It was a one-night government orchestrated plundering, pillaging of Jewish property nationwide. That event shocked the Jewish population of Germany. That event horrified the world. Well, that, that was the end of everything. Following the Crystal Knot, an appeals by Jewish committees and a debate in Parliament, the British government agreed to admit up to 10,000 children from Germany, Austria, and Czechoslovakia. A Christian sect, the Quakers, with the cooperation of a couple of Jewish resettlement groups guarantee to the British government that any child that comes in will be clothed, fed, housed, and educated at no cost to the British Treasury. So children from two years to 15 years were brought by their parents to these stations. They get to the station and they're told only one maybe two. So you can well imagine what went on on these station platforms when a mother had to decide who goes and who stays back here to chaos. We are convinced that Mama made a decision after Crystal Night that she could no longer risk her children's lives in Nazi Germany. She decided to get us on the train. And if she could, she would go along as a chaperone. My mother, at the same time, got this visa. It says, refugee to be admitted to the United Kingdom on condition that she does not enter any employment other than as a resident in service in a private household. It saved her life. Of course. We did, that did not include our grandmother, and she was very, very close to us. We got on the train. My sister and I clearly remember kids, nothing but children, and a few chaperones. Those few chaperones had to go back. They didn't have that visa. The night before we left, I cleaned out my suitcase, and I threw all my underwear out. 
Well, what do you think I put in there? My dolls. It's more important than underwear, right? I well, only remember getting on the train, and I remember being mildly seasick on the ferry going from Holland to England. Well, we went from Eschwege to Kassel, and from there we went by train through Germany to the Dutch border. And when we got to the Dutch border, the train stopped suddenly. I remember the train jerking back and forth, and I heard the Gestapo boots, which you can't mistake. Looking into our suitcases, they screamed at us, you Jewish dogs, do you have any diamonds? First of all, in 1939, I doubt if there were any Jews left in Germany that still had diamonds, and they certainly wouldn't have been foolish enough to put any contraband in their children's suitcases. Finally, we continued on and crossed the border into Holland. The first stop we came to, there were smiling Dutch angels handing us hot chocolate and fruit that I had never seen. What a feeling. The minute you got over the border, it felt like heaven. So from there, we went on to Hook van Holland, which is the port for Rotterdam. And we went on the small ship in the evening, and in the morning, we arrived in Harwich. So we went from there by train to London. We landed in London in June of 1939. And I remember quite clearly, we were in some kind of uh, youth or children's hostel for just a couple of nights. And they took us to center of England. They took us to a town called Coventry. I was sent to the Simons family, a Jewish family, and Bert was sent to the shepherds. I became, literally, I became a maid at the age of 10. The, the shepherds took me in and, and literally bent the family, their family mores and style to assimilate me. The kinder transport is but a small part of Holocaust history, but an important one. We were the ones to whom nothing happened at all, but something did happen. We were spared the horrors of the death camps. We were uprooted, transported to a different culture, and faced not the horror of the camps, but a very human mixture of kindness, indifference, occasional exploitation, and the selflessness of ordinary people faced with needy children. The British people came forth and opened their hearts and homes. Only 9,354 children were actually saved. For every child, myself, my sister, 150 children did not survive. So that's, that's the story. So it's, it's a sliver of this terrible, terrible chaos that has a happy ending. Oma, we called our grandmother Oma. She was a very warm person. She used to cuddle us a lot. We sat on her lap and she told us stories, all kinds of stories. I think most of them must have been lies, but <laughs> they made us feel good. And she was very warm and very affectionate. And Mama was indomitable. She was tough, and she had guts, guts and perseverance, but she had time to be kind. She was very giving and very charitable. She had a spirit. People, young people, just flocked to her. Spectacular lady. The last 10 years of our mother's life here in Dallas, she came down with Maggie in 63, and we got her her own apartment 
we got her a credit card. <laughs> you know, she, she had some independence and she got to see all her five grandchildren. 